Lauren here, children's librarian from the Half Hollow Hills Community Library. So excited to share a wonderful program with you today called Pumpkin Preschool. Today we're going to read a story. We're going to learn a little bit about pumpkins and parts of the pumpkin. And I'm going to show you how to do a really fun craft. So if you have a pumpkin, just like I have a pumpkin here, that's terrific. But if you don't, that's okay too. We're gonna hang on to our pumpkin for a little bit later in our program. But first we're gonna get started with a story. Before we start our story, we have to get all of our wiggles out so we can be really good listeners. So everybody, let's raise our hands and wiggle our fingers. Great. Now, can we wiggle our toes? You can't see my feet, but my toes are wiggling. Can we wiggle our shoulders? Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And let's wiggle our nose. Excellent. Now no more wiggles are left in me, so I can sit still, as still as can be. Okay, the story we're gonna read today is called Pumpkin Day. And this is a great story all about pumpkins, and we are gonna learn a lot today. So let's listen in to our story. Stay tuned. Pumpkin Day written and illustrated by Nancy Elizabeth Wallace. Daddy, it's pumpkin day, said Trudy one October morning. The day we have pumpkin pancakes for breakfast, he asked. Yes, said Trudy, the day we go to pick out pumpkins and buy pumpkin pie. Yes, Daddy, shouted Trudy and Jack together. Well, Hooray for pumpkin day, declared dad, and pass the pumpkin pancakes, please. After breakfast, they walked to Pumpkin Hollow Farm. The yellow and orange leaves glowed against the sea clear blue sky. The fallen leaves made a crunch, crunch, crunch sound under their feet. Good morning, said Mrs. Bell. There are lots of pumpkins in the pumpkin patch. We have miniatures, pumpkins for cooking and eating, pumpkins for carving, and one that is very special. I'm sure you'll find it. Trudy, what do the signs say? Asked Jack. Trudy read, Welcome to Pumpkin Hollow Farm. It took between 90 and 120 days to grow these pumpkins. Please don't sit or climb on them. Please don't pick them up. Please don't pick up the pumpkins by their stems. Thank you, Mrs. Bell. Joke, what does a pumpkin sow? A pumpkin patch. In the fields behind the farm stand, there were small pumpkins and tall pumpkins, round pumpkins and skinny pumpkins, big pumpkins and bumpy pumpkins. I like this wrinkly one, said Trudy. Jack patted the pumpkins. They made a thump sound. I want this one, he said. Trudy, do pumpkins grow on trees? No, Jack. They grow on vines, she answered. That's right, said Mrs. Bell. We plant the seeds in the spring after the last frost. They sprout, then grow into vines. The vines grow really long, as long as a house with lots of big leaves. At this time of year, the vines are shriveling up, but look, there's a female pumpkin flower. The pumpkin grows from the swelling at the base of the flower. It's green and small, said Trudy. How do pumpkins grow so big? And orange, asked Jack. Mrs. Bell took some pictures from her pocket. Well, with the leaves making food and the roots growing in good, rich soil, and with the right amount of sun and water and fertilizer and weeding and bug control, the pumpkins will grow from late summer to harvest in time. 
night and day, they grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Trudy and Jack joined in. The word pumpkin comes from a Latin word, peppo. Peepo, they both giggled. Mrs. Bell laughed too. Yes, peepo, it means ripened by the sun. As the pumpkin ripens, what happens to the color? It changes, exclaimed Trudy. Look, Trudy, this is the one I want, yelled Jack. Wow, Trudy shouted. It is a Maxima variety, said Mrs. Bell. Maximas can gain as much as five pounds a day. I wish it were the kind for making pies. It would sure make a lot of them, said Dad. Yum! Who's going to carry this giant pumpkin home, asked Mom. Then she said, I will. Can you guess how? As a memory, say, pumpkin pie, please. Click. They picked out their pumpkins and followed Mrs. Bell back to the farm stand. What do the signs say, Trudy? Asked Jack. Trudy read. The parts of a pumpkin. Stem, shell, flesh, pulp, seeds. Joke. What did the pumpkin say after Thanksgiving? Good pie. Mom, look at the baby pumpkins, said Trudy. Those are baby boos, said Mom. They are fully grown, just a miniature variety. We can buy a few for decorating and some pumpkin bread mix and a pumpkin treat for supper. As soon as they got home, Trudy and Jack practiced drawing pumpkin faces on paper. Then they drew faces on their pumpkins. I want a pumpkin to have ears, said Trudy, and to be really scary. Dad cut out lids so Trudy and Jack could reach inside. They rolled up their sleeves and scooped. It's all stringy and gooey, said Trudy. Look! Trudy seeds. We can dry some and save them in a jar and plant them next spring, she said. They scraped the insides clean with big spoons. Trudy used an apple corer to carve out a nose. Mom and Dad carved the pumpkin faces. Jack, our pumpkins are turning into jack-o'-lanterns, said Trudy. In olden times, they hollowed out potatoes and turnips and beets for lanterns. They cut out a little window and put a burning coal inside for light. They called those early days, they called those early jack-o'-lanterns bogies, said Dad. Bogies, they all giggled. Mom and Dad and Trudy and Jack made a special pumpkin supper. They ate pumpkin muffins, toasted pumpkin seeds sprinkled on a salad, and for dessert, pumpkin pie. Trudy looked over at the pumpkins. Finally, it was dark outside. Mom, she whispered, it's time. Jack turned out the lights. Ooh, boo. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story. I love that one, Pumpkin Day. There's so much information that you can learn about pumpkins. It's so terrific. So in the story, Mrs. Bell talked about different types of pumpkins. So I have a pumpkin here today, and this is a special pumpkin. This is a pumpkin that they talked about that's used for cooking or baking. So this one you can make uh, pumpkin pie out of. So that's what I'm going to do a little bit later after we uh, open it up and see what's inside. But let's talk about this pumpkin a little bit. So what do we know about pumpkins? What colors are pumpkins typically when we pull them off the vines? What color is this pumpkin? You can shout it out if you know. Let me hear. 
This pumpkin is orange. If you said orange, that's correct. When pumpkins are fully grown and we are ready to pick them off the vine, they are orange. And this shape of the pumpkin, this is a, a smaller pumpkin. It's not very big like the giant pumpkin that's in the story. But this is a smaller pumpkin. And um, what shape do you think this pumpkin is? If you know your shapes, let's talk about the shape. So this pumpkin is an oval shape. So it's not very round, um, it's more of an oval. And pumpkins can be uh, shorter or taller, they can be round, um, lots of different types of pumpkins out there. And sometimes your pumpkin has a big stem, mine doesn't have a very big stem, the stem got cut off a little bit, so it has a little tiny stem, but sometimes they have a very big stem and it's sort of swirly and coily. Um, that's right off the vine and that's pretty neat. All right, so we talked about our stem. This is called a stem. Now the orange part, the outside part that we were describing, this is called the skin of the pumpkin, the pumpkin's skin. Next is the ribs of the pumpkin. So if you take a close look at my pumpkin here, you can see these lines going down. And I know you can't feel it, but it feels kind of bumpy, those lines. Those are called ribs, the ribs of a pumpkin. Did you know that we have ribs inside of us? Just like our ribs, pumpkins have ribs too. And there they are. Sometimes you can really see them and feel them. They're very pronounced, but these are a little more subtle. You don't notice them as much. All right. So those are the parts of the outside of the pumpkin. So I think that we should open this pumpkin up and see what's inside because there is so much to learn about a pumpkin. So if you have a pumpkin, get ready to open it up. Make sure you're doing this with a grown up because it will require something sharp and we don't want anyone to get hurt. So I'm gonna use a sharp knife next to open up our pumpkin and see what's inside. Okay, so now we're going to explore the inside of a pumpkin. So I have my pumpkin here and I have it on a plate. So this is going to get very messy. So make sure you have a plate. Um, I have some napkins to clean up or you can spread them out on your table also. So I'm going to be very careful and remember to do this with a grown up. And I also have a spoon and this is going to be helpful for when I want to scoop out the insides of the pumpkin. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to cut this pumpkin open. Alright, so now I cut my pumpkin open. I'm going to put my knife away in a safe spot. Let's see what it looks like inside. Whoa. So what do you see in that pumpkin? What do you see inside? All right, well, I see seeds. These little tiny sort of white things, these are called pumpkin seeds, just like they talked about in the story. So this is what we plant in the spring so that pumpkins will grow. But we can also eat these, which is pretty neat. They're very tasty. You can cook them and bake them in the oven and they become a really tasty treat. Um, so those are called pumpkin seeds. Now this other uh, part of the pumpkin around here, this light colored part, this is called the pulp of the pumpkin, the pulp. So this part we can eat. Sometimes when you eat pumpkin pie, um, that's what pumpkin pie is made out of, the pulp. So that's a really tasty part too. So this is so interesting. Look at how many seeds there are. There are so many seeds inside here. So cool. All right. So just like in the story, what they did was use a spoon to scoop out the insides of a pumpkin. So I can use my spoon here and scoop out the seeds. 
and this sort of stringy, sticky part. And I am going to put those aside. See what I did here? So this pumpkin is a pumpkin that I can use to cook pumpkin pie. So as much as I like to experiment and explore, I also don't like to waste food. So we're not just using this to look at it. I am going to bake a pumpkin pie later. But what I'm also going to do is scoop out these seeds to use them for something really neat. So if you are doing this at home, scoop out your seeds. You're going to clean them, so make sure that stringy orange part is away from them so they'll be nice and clean and then you're going to put them aside to dry. So usually takes a few hours or overnight to dry. So that's what I'm going to do next. Clean my seeds so that they're nice and clean and dry for our next part. <music> Part our pumpkin and I separated the pumpkin seeds. For the craft portion of our program today, I have my pumpkin seeds here. They've been cleaned and I dried them. So now I separated them into three little baggies here, as you can see. And what I did was put one tablespoon of water into each baggie so they're just a little bit wet. And now I have some food coloring. And what I'm gonna do is dye each baggie of uh, seeds a different color. And that we're gonna use to create a project. So you can create uh, a beautiful work of art that I'll show you um, in a little bit later on, but you can also eat pumpkin seeds, which is great. So if you choose not to do an art project with your seeds, you can put them in the oven and bake them and eat them, and they're really delicious. And because we're using food coloring, you can also eat them after you dye them. So if you'd like to do that too, you can. So either way, pumpkin seeds are just terrific. And I will show you how to make something beautiful with your pumpkin seeds now. I hope you had fun exploring a pumpkin and you learned a little bit about what's inside of a pumpkin. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the craft and uh, I hope you enjoy eating the seeds or eating the insides of your pumpkin. There's so much to learn and so many extra activities you can do at home. Um, if you are doing this at home, some extension activities you might want to try is weighing your pumpkin, maybe putting it on a scale, seeing how much it weighs. You can also use a measuring tape and measure your pumpkin, see how big it is. Um, you can also talk about uh, if the pumpkin will sink or float. So there's a lot more you can do with your pumpkin at home. Um, but we're so glad you joined us today. We hope that you learned something exciting and new, and we hope to see you soon. Thank you and take care. Bye-bye.